182 Flyer channel right here on YouTube. Myself and Captain Misty over there are getting ready for a special flight today. We're going to start pre-flighting 5-3 uh, Tango and we'll talk a little bit more about that here in just a little bit. But we're headed up to Greenville, Texas today, up by Dallas. Uh, looks to be a great day. If you guys look around behind me, I mean just an absolute great day today that we're going to be out flying in. Uh, after a whole week of thunderstorm activity and stuff like that, I mean, just an absolutely beautiful day to come out here and fly. So we're going get, to get started. We're going to start pre-flighting the airplane. Uh, you'll see, uh, looks like Captain Misty's over there playing with a, a very kennel for a dog. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about that uh, as we get underway. So stick around. Welcome on board. We have Captain Misty in the co-pilot seat today. Hello. Today, as I was saying a little bit earlier, is a special flight for us because we are heading over to Greenville, Texas. And we are going over to the Malinois Ranch Rescue uh, where we've been looking at a, a four-year-old female over there named Mackenzie for a little while now. And going up there to do our first adoption flight and bring her back home. So welcome aboard Malinois Ranch Rescue Flight 001. Nothing up final, nothing down the runway, nothing behind us. Window shut, takeoff checklist, avionics are set, trim is set, flaps 10 degrees, props full forward, mixture full rich, we'll rotate at 55 knots, climbing out at 80 knots, landing gear will go up, flaps uh, will, re will retract slowly, takeoff checklist complete. All right, you ready to go? Airspeed's alive. Gear up. Orange light indicating. Up on my side. Looks like it's up on my side too. And break stage. 
Uh, first stage traffic, Skyline 4953 Tango, turn crosswind, runway 17. First stage. Kennedy Regional, Cessna November 366, Victor 10 to the west. Moving for the left downwind, runway 34. Real pretty day to come out and fly, huh? It is. If only it was a little cooler. Yep. If I fix the air conditioner on this thing, it'd be a lot better. See? <laughs> We're offering a new camera view today. We've got one stuck to the tail back there, and hopefully it's working correctly. I'm not really sure if we're still making a connection back there or not, but we'll find out, I guess, here real soon. When the battery runs out and we can't use it anymore, if it actually turned on. It looked like it had turned on earlier, but I don't know if the remote is staying connected to it, but we'll see how that goes. And then we're going to move this camera around behind us so you can see the uh, the instrument panel and what's going on up here uh, and and a little more of the view uh, as we go out uh, and get underway uh, coming up on 3,000 and we're going to go up to 11,500 today for this flight so it'll be nice and cool once we get up to altitude a little bit We'll call San Antonio Approach here directly and, and get flight following for this flight since we're flying VFR. 20 stage traffic, glider 103 Golf Hotel, staging on display threshold runway 17, Bernie stage. Are we getting anything? Yeah, I just saw the time a few minutes ago. Oh, did you? Yeah. So maybe if you hold it over by the window. See, so we're using the little GoPro mount. We've got the old GoPro Hero 3 back there. And we don't really use that, that GoPro for anything because it doesn't have the image stabilization as the Hero 6. Uh, doesn't have as many features as the Hero 6. But we figured we'd give it a try and bolt it to the tail and see if it makes it all the way up to Greenville, Texas today and see what happens. Maybe it's already flown off. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, if you can see here, it's actually looking for it right now. So we might not even have it anymore. <laughs> I don't know, it'd be kind of a silly blooper, I guess, if <laughs> go back there and the, the damn camera's gone. <laughs> oh, we got a timer there. Oh, it's still there. All right, well, we're not going to do too much tail footage. I'm going to go ahead and click it off so we don't burn up the battery. Temple traffic, Jeff Fox, 8 8 Victor Zulu, turn left, downwind, runway 3 3. We've got the traffic right in front of us. We'll extend our downwind. All right. So we'll see how long that, that camera stays on there. I thought we would do a different, uh, it'd be kind of a cool view because uh, some of the other aviators that have retracts on YouTube, they put the camera back there and you can actually see the gear drop and, and, and get, a, get a view of the runway as you take off. So just something else to play with. I was going to put it on the wing over here, but I don't think that that camera mount would have been very good. Um, my tie downs actually fold into the, into the wing strut, so I think it was going to be back there flapping. So I'll have to come up with something else for a, for a wing view up here. But for now, we'll see how that does. We'll play with it. Let's have a look at the chart here real quick and grab San Antonio's uh, frequency. We'll call them for flight following. 2555 Bravo, departing 17. Burning 6. 2445. Good afternoon, San Antonio approach. Skyline 4953 Tango. Hey, it's Skyline calling me. Uh, Skyline, say again, you're stepped on. Skyline 4953 Tango. Uh, I'd like to request flight following. We're uh, just off of Bernie stage. We're passing through 6,000, climbing to 11,500. Skyline 4953 Tango, Roger, State Destination Airport. Greenville, Texas, Golf Victor Tango. Skyline 53 Tango, Roger, the San Antonio Altimeter 3001, Squawk 24049 then. Two four. That was Squawk two four four, and I didn't catch the last uh, the last digit. November five three Tango Squawk two four zero four zero four two four zero four for five three Tango. And welcome back, everybody. We're going to do the uh, over the shoulder cam for a little bit. See how that works out. See how, see how you guys enjoy that view. You should be able to see all the instrument panel up here. 
Uh, right now we're at 11,500 at our cruise altitude for the day. Uh, we got the iPad mounted up here. Uh, we got the Aspen that we're looking at. We got the Garmin G750. Autopilot is is tracking correctly up to Greenville. At about another hour and 13 minutes of flying. Uh, right now though we're enjoying uh, 45 degree temperatures up here at altitude. Very nice and cool for a nice summer day to go up here and fly. And here shortly, co-pilot Captain Misty is going to get our, our in-flight services ready. So we'll check back in with you guys here in a little bit. about time for our in-flight services, don't you? I think so. Are you able to reach them and, and, and see what tasty treats we have on board today? So our tasty treats today are chicken bacon wrap. Ooh. Bacon ranch wrap is always good. I'm not sure which one's which, though. Well. Because uh, you had extra thingies. I just had pickles added to mine. We stopped at the QT, the quick trip. Uh, they built a new one over by the airport, so we figured we'd stop by and get tasty treats. Since we're flying at lunchtime today, boy, that smells good. Too bad you don't have smell-o-vision on these cameras. It smells very good. Is that one yours? I think so. Let me okay. check. Six one nine one Bravo, out there for me. I'm not too sure pickles are on either one of these. No? Oh. Well, well, that'll work then. Take one of them. Oh, yeah. <coughs> not more probable. I didn't but see ID. If I bite into it, I will get We need to install some cup holders in this thing. Yeah, we talked about that last time. See? Yeah, welcome back. We're still up here cruising at 11,500. Uh, 22, Mike, November. You still on frequency? Only about 40 minutes uh, from our destination at Greenville, Texas. Uh, currently just north of the Waco area. And now that we're done with our in-flight services for for a little bit, we had our had our lunch and enjoying these. Uh, Strawberry lemonade. I want to take a, take a minute and discuss what, what it is we're doing. So we, we kind of touched on that we're, we're going up to the Malinois Ranch Rescue here in Northeast Texas. It is run by a, a very nice lady by the name of Rebecca Jankowski. And her, I believe it's her husband, we'll confirm when we get on the ground, I believe that it is. Um, but they manage as the fosters for the Malinois here in Northeast Texas. Is that right? Yes. So, several months back, uh, we were considering getting a another large breed dog. Uh, we really weren't sure what we were going to go with, either Shepherd or Malinois. I'm kind of partial to Malinois. And we wanted to have a companion for our other dog, uh, which is an Alaskan Klikai. Uh, 74 zero, turn right, heading 280. And just give him a friend, basically, to hang out with uh, whenever we're busy. 
and stuff. And so many of you are probably like, why a Malinois? You got, you've been watching too many John Wick 3, you know, movies and stuff like that, you know, <laughs> with, you know, those super dogs. Well, we'll go ahead and stop you guys there right now. My day job is I work with uh, explosive detection dogs uh, on, on a regular basis for the day job. We'll, we'll leave it at that. Uh, I've been in the working dog career field for over 20 years, and so we figured that we would try to adopt uh, a Malinois if we, if we could. So we did our research, and we came across, you know, the Malinois Ranch Rescue on Facebook of, of all places. And they, they've had this little dog up there named McKenzie for how many years? Uh, a little shy of two years. A little shy of two years. And she hasn't been adoptable. Uh, uh, she had some hip issues that they've got corrected medically and stuff like that. Um, but she does have some small dog issues, and that's one of our concerns with her, but it's something that I think that we can do enough socialization and make it work out uh, to where we can adopt her and give her a good home. So that's that's where we're, that's what we're doing. That's why we're heading up there, and we're going to sit down with Rebecca and give all the viewers, you know, and friends and family a little bit more uh, insight into the Malinois Ranch Rescue when we talk to her a little bit later on once we get back on the ground. And if you're qualified uh, to adopt a Malinois, I would, I would highly recommend that you look at the Malinois Ranch Rescue. Uh, there's a lady by the name of Julie. I can't remember her last name at right now. We'll put that, we'll put all this stuff down in a uh, in the description down below the video, and we'll probably flash something up on the on the screen as to where to where to look and get in touch with them. But if you're qualified and you're looking for uh, a large breed dog with high drive, uh, that's going to need uh, a lot of exercise and activity to keep them entertained. Uh, I would recommend that you look into the Malinois Ranch Rescue because uh, they seem to really know the breed well, uh, take care of the dogs. Uh, on our first visit up here. Uh, we were impressed with their, their small facility that they had out in the country. Zero contact. Uh, uh, and impressed with the knowledge and the, the level of training that, that goes into these dogs, you know, to help get them ready uh, to go into a non-working life, you know, more of a, as a companion dog or or something to that effect. So, so hopefully you guys are enjoying the flight. And Another uh, 36 minutes now of uh, flying time, and we'll be on the ground there in Greenville, and we'll be meeting up with them uh, at the Greenville Airport, and give you guys an update once we get there. Major traffic, Skyline 495 through Tango, 8 mile right base, runway 35. Not enough cushion. 
that we didn't bounce, so. No, it was, it was a little bit firm. It was a little bit firm, but we can deal with that. After landing checklist, flaps up. Welcome to Greenville Majors Airport, everyone. Hey, what's going on? We're here on the ground at Majors Field. Uh, welcome. And coming up right over there, outside the, outside the gate is the little puppy that we're adopting. She's not really a little puppy. <laughs> She's a four-year-old Malinois female that we have been uh, looking to adopt that we were talking about a little bit earlier. Her name is Mackenzie, so we'll let them give her a break, and then we're going to go inside and visit with them here, here, uh, here pretty soon. All right, welcome back. Hey, we're over here at the uh, Majors Regional Airport up here in Greenville, Texas, and with us today, along with uh, Miss Mackenzie, whom we're adopting, is. Rebecca Jankowski, welcome. Hi, thank you. The, uh, tell us a little bit about the Malinois Ranch Rescue. So the Malinois Ranch Rescue is a rescue, a breed specific rescue that um, deals with Malinois that are typically uh, hard to place or have been um, determined to be impossible to place that are at risk of euthanasia. Um, it was founded by Julie Neal, who is the owner of the rescue. She lives in McKenzie, Tennessee. Um, She's probably been doing rescue for more than 10 years now, but it was um, uh, officially given a 501c3 status in okay. early 2016. Okay, cool. And with with that being very specific, or is it just Malinois, or do you get shepherds in, or any other working class dogs that are in? Occasionally we do Dutch shepherds, and we've had a few German shepherds. Yeah. Um, so we're primarily Belgian Malinois and Dutch shepherds. Okay. Um, and the German Shepherds are few and far between these days. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your facility up here in Northeast Texas. Is you're one of the fosters for Julie Neal out there in Tennessee. And just tell us a little bit about your facility and what, what kind of work you're doing with these dogs, you know, getting them ready to, to go to their forever homes and stuff, if you want to. Sure. So we have about 20 acres outside of um, Dallas, Texas um, that uh, we my husband is a full-time dog trainer, and he works with the dogs. I bring him into, into uh, foster, and he yeah. has the task of rehabilitating them. Yeah. Um, I do a little bit, but I'm not home as much as he sure, is, so he sure. does a lot of it. So we try to make them so they are, they learn some basic commands. They learn how to um, be good with other people. Um, in some foster facilities, they do interact with dogs. Ours, they don't interact directly with them. They indirectly interact with the dogs. Uh, but the goal is to just get them rehabilitated so that they can be placed with a proper home and then we're right. working very hard to get them into a home that yeah. is appropriate for them. And until uh, Misty and I had reached out, how long has Mackenzie been with you guys? Oh, Mackenzie had been with us for over a year yeah. at our, in our facility. She's been in the rescue since September of 2018. Uh -huh. um, and then she's been with us since January of 2019. Yeah. She's been in the program for a while. She has. Yeah. She has. She um, was a stray in Florida. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. <laughs> um, she was in a, came from a shelter in Florida. They were overcrowded, so they reached out. Somebody reached out to Julie and uh, transported her up in July. I'm sorry, yeah. September of 2018. Um, the uh, facility in Tennessee is, a, is an out, primarily outdoor facility. It was a little bit too... Um, too noisy for Mackenzie, so yeah. she ended up being transferred out here where she has um, thrived. She yeah. does very, very well. She has her own room and right. place, and, and she's done very, very well. So a lot of the things that um, stimulated her early on seems to not be bothersome to her anymore. So we worked very hard to get her to kind of calm down, yeah. chill a little bit, and just be a good, yeah. good human being, a good social mm -hmm. being. I know that you got more uh, Malinois and stuff out of your facility now. Can you, would you mind sharing a little bit about the dogs that you have out there now and where they're at in their in their their journey to becoming rehomed or in the process of sure. of being qualified to re to be rehomed or sure. whatever? So we have one other dog that's uh, from the ranch um, that his name is Ruger. He was a uh, canine, 
and was returned for biting his handler. Um, he also got transported from Tennessee to our place for a quieter, gentler environment, and the hope was that he might be able to be repurposed into another um, uh, agency. Unfortunately, he's a little bit too reactive to do that, so he's probably a permanent fixture yeah. at our place. Okay. He's very happy. Yeah. He has not been reactive to, um, to us at all. He does, mm -hmm. does well, and he's just in a good, happy place right now. That's good. Um, we have several of our own dogs that are personal dogs, and then we have um, several dogs that are um, that were purchased to be uh, working dogs, some as puppies. And okay. when you get them as puppies, they don't always pan out to be working sure. dogs. So we have right. one of those that's still a good candidate for a working okay. dog. The other ones are just kind of hanging out in our place until yeah. we find them a perfect home. Awesome. That's awesome. So for those that, that know a little bit about the Malinois or the Dutch Shepherd, or even the German Shepherds that occasionally that you may have. What are the qualifications that you're looking for in that dog's forever home? And what's the, what's kind of the process of, uh, of the, the adoption process, I guess is what I'm saying, is what would be the adoption process and what, quali what qualities are you looking for in someone's forever home when it comes to adopting one of these high drive, high energy, Malinois, Dutch Shepherds, so forth? Sure. So the very first thing is to fill out an application and we tell everyone to be as specific as possible is right. regarding what type of a dog they're looking for. Yeah. We do not match dogs, or Julie I should say, does not match dogs based on appearance and a lot of people look at the dog and go, I want that dog, it's beautiful. She yeah. bases them based on appropriate fit. So if the dog uh, fits what you're looking for, if you want a high energy dog that you're going to be very active with, if you have small children and the dog can't be with small children, that doesn't yeah. work. So we, we start with the adoption application, and then we um, try to make sure that the dog is a fit to the family. Um, most Many of the families that adopt have had experience with Malinois in the past, right. and we understand it. But the biggest thing is we make sure that you know these dogs were, were high-risk dogs already, sure. so we certainly don't want them to fail. Right. Um, right. So we will not adopt a dog out if we think there's any possibility they will not do well. Um, most, most of the dogs request uh, ongoing training, have someone, have a trainer available that can sure. work with you. Um, unlike some rescues, we don't require that you have a fence jarred and you have, you know, X, Y, and Z available all the time. Um, we're a little more flexible in that respect because uh -huh. everybody's got different circumstances. Yeah. Um, but there's certainly, every once in a while there will be a, what we call a pet dog. It's very chill and will get along with everybody and everything, but the vast majority of the dogs are very high energy and um, they need some supervision. Uh -huh. And you need to be willing to follow recommendations. We've lived with these dogs for months yeah. on at times. We know yeah. what they do. So if you aren't willing to follow what we suggest, um, that's kind of a setup for failure. So Good deal. So for those that really like the breed, but it may not be for them, but they want to be involved in the Malinois Ranch Rescue in some way, shape, or form to donations, or where can they where can they reach out to, what can, who, who can they get in touch with uh, in order to try to get involved a little bit, you know, and, and be a part of it. Certainly, so that anybody can always reach out to me. Um, our, we have a Facebook group, it's called the Malinois Ranch Rescue. Um, there's also a page, the group is much more active than the page. Um, we accept donations uh, either by snail mail, um, PayPal, Zelly, Venmo, you name it. Yeah. Every once in a while I put a donate button on a post somewhere. Yeah. We, we encourage people to become members and mm -hmm. um, just allow us to kind of yeah. you know, put stuff out there periodically. Um, we have a website as well, the Malinois Ranch Rescue, um, and you can go on that website. One important thing is not all dogs are listed on the website. Sure. Okay. We don't put dogs up on the website um, again, because a lot of people tend to look at the pictures and say, I want that dog. Mm -hmm. So um, we do provide some information. There are some adopted dogs on the website. We try to keep that up to date, but the new yeah. dogs don't always appear there because sometimes they're not quite ready anyway. Yeah. So. Thanks, Rebecca, for spending time with us today and talking about the Malinois Ranch Rescue. And if you want to know more about the Malinois Ranch Rescue yourself, check out the links down below. What's going on guys? We're getting ready to load up McKinsey and head on back to San Antonio. Say it's okay, Mom. We'll, we'll, we'll give you a touch when we get there. So we'll 
lots of pictures, plenty of updates. All right, mixture full rich. We're ready for takeoff. Welcome back, everybody. Great visit with uh, Paul and Rebecca Jankowski. Very emotional for them, wasn't it? Yes, it was. They've uh, they have fostered uh, Miss McKenzie for quite some time now, uh, as you heard uh, in the brief interview that we that we did with them. Uh, they've had her for a little over a year, I guess. Almost two. Almost two years. Okay. So very emotional for them. We didn't uh, we didn't film any of that. No. So, but they're uh, really happy to see that she's getting ready to go to her forever home. Yep. So. And they're actually pretty excited that she gets to fly. So, Major's traffic, Skyline 4953 Tango, taking off runway 35. I'll be departing the pattern to the south. Major traffic. All right, final is clear. Yep. Runway is clear. Grab the window. Like I saw you in a picture in a magazine. Sun is something up down on the boulevard. Look like a movie star, but you're not even trying hard. On the road, going nowhere with the top down. While the rest of us are stuck here in our small towns. I wanna know, I wanna know, I wanna know who you are. Up on my side. Good. Thumbs up. Okay, flight service frequency that is approved. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Malinois Ranch Thank Rescue you, Flight 001 is level and cruise at 10.5. That's 10,000 foot by our feet for the non aviators out there. But we wanted to give you guys a quick shot of how McKinsey is right. She looks pretty comfortable, just enjoying uh, the cool air up here at uh, altitude. Riding really nice, having a good flight all the way back to San Antonio. And welcome back, everyone. We are uh, four miles from the airfield, descending at this time, uh, back at home for Bernie stage. Enjoy the landing. Before landing checklist, gas on full tank, below 140 gear coming down. Will out my window. All right, I got one green, one in the mirror, one on the door. 10 degrees of flaps, trip the nose up. Mixture full rich. Get our propeller in full forward. Four landing checklist complete. Bernie stage traffic, Cessna 4, above Kilo, clear the runway, tight to the cover, parts of bearing. Bernie stage traffic, Skyline 4, 9 or 5, 3 Tango, overflying the field at 2,300, setting up the downwind for runway 17, Bernie stage. Bernie stage traffic, Skyline 4, 9 or 5, 3 Tango, turning final, runway 17. That'll work. Good job, Dan. Yeah. 
Bear Exchange traffic, Skyline 495 through Tango, clear active runway. Well, thanks for joining us, everyone that got to, uh, it's going to get to watch this flight. Hope you guys enjoyed it. First adoption flight that we've ever done. Although she is our, she's going to be our dog, but it's our first adoption flight. Hopefully we'll do a few more, either with the, ran the Malinois Ranch Rescue or Pilots and Paws, one of the two. Bernie Shays traffic, 416 here, Romeo turning base leg, full stop landing runway 17. So hopefully, hopefully everybody's doing good. And we'll catch you on another video someday soon. Hello, so we're going to give you an update on Miss McKenzie. She's been with us for about a month in her new forever home. Um, we picked her up um, from Rebecca on September the 12th. She's been a great addition to our family. Um, she's the silliest, sweetest dog that uh, you could probably get out of a rescue. Um, she just wants love, attention, hugs, um, anything that you can give her. Um, she's like your little shadow. Um, think she's a big lap dog. She always wants to be in your lap if you allow her. Um, if not, then she'll be right by your feet um, anytime you're doing anything. Um, here she is today. She's sitting in one of her favorite chairs outside. Um, as you can see, um, we do have her with her little mask on. And the reason why we do that is because we have a little small dog, um, rogue that we are still working with them to get together um, and hopefully she won't have to wear her mask long term um, she does tolerate him very well um, they're getting along a lot better they'll chase squirrels along the fence line together um, and try to play together um, he's still a little apprehensive because of her size and uh, sometimes she will kind of sling him around if they uh, t play tug of war for a few minutes or so so we just kind of wanted to give you an update on her. Um, she's doing great. And also just show you some of her little things. She loves to be outside on our in our backyard. And that bench right there is like her favorite place to kind of sit and um, perch and protect everybody. So that's our little update for Miss McKenzie. And um, hope you enjoy some of the pictures that we will provide also. What? What? Tell me about it. What? 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 